Care Collab time. Hello, thank you, thank you for joining me. I appreciate your presence and your time very, very much. If you're new, this is a Care Collab where several channels get together and feature their orchids, the same orchid, but in different parts of the world. And I will feature their links in my description below to the videos that they will make today and post today. They being Karin's orchids and Fernanda Nacimento orchids and succulents. And our candidate for today is Rincatlianthe Fuchs Orange Nugget. Mine happens to have the name Dresden. I am from Germany. I am now in southern Spain where I grow my orchids. But Dresden, you know, they didn't have Munich, they didn't have Berlin, they didn't have Hamburg. I'll take Dresden as an homage to my heritage. Welcome, everybody that is familiar with this concept. Your time is also super appreciated because we have been doing quite a lot of care collabs and the fact that you still tune in to yet another one, thank you very, very much. Let's get on with it then because this is a Fuchs orange nugget, not to be confused with a Xunying orange nugget. Fuchs orange nugget has the cross of the Rin Catlianthe orange nugget with the Catlianthe Viola Sanjume. The Xunying orange nugget parents are actually this Fuchs orange nugget with Rin Catlianthe Xingfeng little son. There is a difference, and not just in the name Fuchs or Xunying. I believe that the Xunying orange nugget is slightly smaller than the Fuchs orange nugget. But when it comes to the blooms, they are very, very similar and hard to separate unless you go by size. The Fuchs orange nugget should be about 20, maybe maximum 30 centimeters tall. It's a unifoliate and it will bloom regularly, faithfully, every year at the end of a new growth. The Fuchs Orange Nugget is also from 1987, whereas the Xunying is from 2015, so it's a much newer cross. Other than that, it is any kind of Catlia environment, climate, treatment, growth. In southern Spain, I have an extremely dry climate. I have very little, if no, humidity to speak of whatsoever and Catlias do like it hot and humid. I can do hot, I cannot do humid, and that is why I have my preferred setup of Leka and self-watering. It works really, really well for me. However, you might think that they look weird, and they do. And I'm going to get you in a little bit closer, seeing as my blooms are fading, but we'll get to that, so that everybody with a keen eye, eagle eye, can see what is going on with the leaves. Since I got them, I thought that they were healthy. And then certain little signs and things started to happen on my leaves. This. And that is not as predominant as the other one that I will show you right now. This has been a trait the moment that she started to get acclimated in my climate. And I thought, this is a virus. So they immediately went into a separate section of where I grow. They live on the south side of my blooming alley. And then they were separated away into indoors where they got a lot of light, but weren't anywhere near my other orchids. So when the new growths come out, they are clean. And then things start to happen and change. To me, this is a virus. I don't know for sure. I am not going to pay for a test. So that, you know, pretty much is out of the equation. But when you look at this, your opinion is of great interest to me. I mentioned them last year. I gave them an a fungicide soak last year, even though it has nothing to do with a virus. But I wanted to throw a chemical at them, <laughs> any chemical, 
just to see if there's any kind of a reaction. But of course, we know that viruses you cannot cure, but you know, desperate times, desperate measures. <laughs> but your keen eye is very much appreciated. And I will sporadically be inserting bloom pictures and footage because every single blooming they've had with me, the blooms are perfect. This one here that you see is also a Fuchs Orange Nugget Dresden. It blooms with beautiful flarings on the petals and sepals. So I'd like to keep that. The other one, as you can see, the blooms, even though they're fading, the footage will show that they are perfect. There is no color break. So last year after my fungicide treatment, I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna put them away. I've made my piece. And if you're gonna go, then you're gonna go. And I really didn't care for them much at all. I flushed them and it was always a headache because I had to remind myself they had to be treated last or dealt with last because I didn't know what I was up against. So I didn't want to go touching, touching my other orchids. So the care for these guys last year in 2020 was almost, you could say, shockingly neglectful considering what I do with all my other cattleyas. And yet, despite the fact that the growth, because of that neglect, did not even reach the same height as the old growth from 2019, they bloomed profusely. So what can I tell you? This orchid is very, very vigorous. It is strong enough to bloom well on a growth that by no means is big and substantial. And then I waited for this year for the color break in the blooms and there was none. Both of them, both of them did absolutely superbly again this year. And this year for the first time, I had a fragrance on this one, akin to apricot, fuzzy apricot in the warm sun. When you have that aroma, that is what this one smelled like. And I've never had a fragrance from either of them before. This one was a little bit subdued in its fragrance. So I'm thinking if this is a virus, they are gonna go. I, I don't want the headache and all that. I have an orchid with Fusarium that I'm babying now and I don't really need this. But your keen eye would be very much appreciated. If you're looking, for example, for an easy growing cattleya, considering that I hardly took care of them properly last year at all, this is a great, great hybrid to have. It will grow many growths. This year I'm expecting three from this one. There's a growth here, and then there's two over here. And the other one will probably throw out another three as well. It is vigorous. The hybrid is absolutely something I would say is an easy grower in the collection. I mean, when I fertilized, I fertilized at 300 parts per million. I flushed my pot through with the mask twice just plain RO water and then filled up again when in active growth at 300 parts per million. Right now, they're not exactly getting that because they haven't really, really started their growth. So they're just getting plain RO water. And all I really try to achieve throughout the winter is to keep the microfiber damp and that's it. I don't really water heavily during the winter because I have temperatures that can go down to five degrees Celsius. And then, you know, cattleya, cold roots, my setup leans towards evaporative cooling, making the roots even cooler. So all of that needs to be a little bit considered and dialed in. So during the winter, I'm pretty, pretty conservative about how I water them, but they are growing. I give them 300 parts per million. During the winter, they are not growing. I don't give them anything. And at this point, I put in for the blooming about 160 parts per million because it was early, early days in the spring. Our nights were still a bit too cool. But for the blooming, just to support that a little bit, I gave them 160 parts per million of fertilizer at about 6.3 pH. Other than that, all I can say is this is a vigorous hybrid. And if you like orange, my goodness, these blooms are 
orange and if you like an apricot fragrance that is nice warm fuzzy like when it was been lying in the sun that is the fragrance that you get out of this hybrid my question only and always will ever remain what do you say and i'm taking advantage of this care collab what do you say about this is it the ring spot virus i would be super interested to know your opinion if they have to go then they will go we could have a look-see as well at the rhizome when I do take them out of their pots, if there is a majority consensus that this is a virus. I will also then wait another four or five weeks to put up a poll with the images on my community posts and ask opinions to get another filter and see what more people have to say if they haven't seen this video. In the meantime, I can tell you neglect works. The occasional watering works. The growth won't be as big, but they will bloom, works. This hybrid is easy peasy. Thank you to Karin's orchids and Fernanda Nacimiento orchids and succulents very, very much for joining me on this care collab. I really appreciate your time as well to join me, make your videos and upload them. And everybody else that is watching this video, thank you very much for taking your time to do so. I look forward to hearing your reaction and response in the comments below. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please, please stay safe. Take care, bye.